Okay, my friends, this is this is so fortuitous. I'm just doing a thing about the no toes and all of the the mud fossils, and I was talking about these these um, tendon antheses, and I'm going on about it, and all of a sudden it pops up that the moon theory is wrong. So I said, well, let me take a look at that. And sure enough, the moon theory is wrong, and I can show you what the moon is. Again, I have said it's just insane. It is literally insane, the things that are true. Let's start from there. Okay, my friends, very, very eventful day. Top theory on the moon's formation may have no evidence at all. No, it has no evidence. I think I know exactly how the moon formed, and it is a shocker du jour of shocker du jours from the home of shocker du jours. <laughs> That's a triple shocker du jour. All right, so the moon is wrong. All right, let's take it from there. What is the moon? Right there, there's the moon. This is the dark side of the moon. You see it? The dark, far, well, far side of the moon. Taken, whatever. You see that? That's right there. Let's see if we can find a more detail about that, which we will right now. All right, this is that spot. Why does it look like that? This was attached with a strap. And that right there, my friends, is a tendon antheses, and it ripped right out. That is biological. We'll come back and look at it in a second. Remember what you see here, that central core, and then all of this stuff, which ripped right off, if it is what I'm saying it is, which it is. So once again, this is a tendon antheses. That ripped out, it left that scar around it with the central core, and even these two little stalks. If you look at this very carefully, you'll see there's, a two, there's two stalks here. One of them is red, and one of them is like they got that yellow look to it. I think this one like could be something to do with a vein, and that one could be to do with an artery. Because everything has to be fed with, with nutrition, even the, the tendon. A anchors. They're not much, but they do take something. And that thing snapped right off of there. A little wake-up call, my friends. Wake up and smell the roses. All right, as I told you, these are tendon antheses. And what is a tendon antheses? Well, here's a, there's two main types of these antheses. There's a fibrous antheses. It's characterized by a direct attachment of the tendon to the bone by little fibers into the tissue. This is that type of an attachment right there. The green it was just an experiment, don't worry about that, but you can see that's how they just embed right in there and that pulls the bone and so forth and it gives it a little bit of spring because then comes the muscle. Alright, so that's the kind of attachment they're talking about here, the first type. Now, the second one is the fibrocartilaginous antheses, which is the, the strap it says it involves a transition zone, which I showed you, of the fibro, which is the fiber cartilage, and calcified cartilage. It provides better cushioning and stress distribution. That's what gives you a little bit of give where the anchor is. That's what tendons do. They anchor you into the body, and then there's a, just a little bit of give, and then comes the muscle. The muscle can pull back and forth like this, but the, the tendon is just a little tiny bit. All right, I just want you to know, this is what a normal tendon does. It gets up to a muscle, and then the muscle pulls. And there's what they call an abrupt transition, I call it. And they usually break right here at the, the tendons when you get an Achilles tendon rupture. And then they have to bring them back together, and that's very, very painful. Now, and again, this is the first type, which is just the little fibers go right in, and it pulls the muscle. But you still have that same thing. Only the fibers here, instead of going into a ball, they would go just right into a bone. That's the difference. All right, the key takeaway is, no matter what type of tendon it is, it, it, they come down these little fibers into these balls. Some of them have this abrupt transition here, a zone that's the abrupt transition where it comes in, depending upon 
the type of tendon it is. Then other ones just distribute right into the bone as I showed you like this style here. Alright, so that's how the tendons work. Alright, don't forget this is the far side of, this, of the moon and this is just, uh, you can go up here and find these all over the place, but you don't get a lot of detail. You can see the spot that I'm talking about and it is this spot right here. Now, where this came from, I can't recall. I, I can't remember where I got this. But this is exactly what you would see if this was a tendon enthesis. You see the three layers here, this first layer here? That's like the layer of fleshiness that would attach into a body. I'm sorry, that's just what it is. Below that, there's another layer of membrane. It goes membrane to membrane to membrane, and you get down to the base, whatever this blue, I would assume, is the, the actual ball. Because there's going to become a ball in here that's basically a stable, really hard ball. Some of these are just unbelievable. Now, where this was in the body of some gigantic creature, I have no idea, but that's all I can tell you. If you can see any difference, you, you tell me. Now, I, again, I don't know where this came from, but this is clearly identical to this. The whole thing's identical. Now, this over here, I would say it could be an impact, yes. That's, I'll go with that. You see it's splashed out all over. But almost none of these are. Almost none of them are impacts. There's some here and there. But see, this, this is the far side of the moon. Now, looking at it in this detail, it's pretty obvious what it is. I'm sorry. I have made my statements. There is nothing but biology in the entire world. These people are looking up that and saying, gee, I wonder what made that big gigantic foot be in the middle of the desert surrounded by all the red blood that dripped off of it in the Great Flood. Oh, maybe that's why. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. As I said, I think I mentioned, I was just going to do about the no-toes and everything, and it popped up about the, the moon. But we need to look at these no-toes, which are the feet of the creatures that were here, and they should be looked at. And we have just tons of them. Um, so the next video will be about the no-toes and all this crazy stuff that is just being ignored. It's, it's insane. Just crazy. And I'm telling you, the stuff is crazy. Look at this. That, my friends, is some kind of a device, and that's like... It looks to me like it comes in or comes around. This stuff around it looks like some kind of like a, in a capacity you have what they call a dielectric. It's a gooey substance that surrounds it and it's, it works with absorbing energy and then bleeding it back off. And that's what a capacitor does. And that looks to me like it's a capacitor. But I don't know. Look at it. There's all kinds of crazy stuff here. And I get stuff from everybody. I have more researchers working for me than anybody in the world, so that's just a fact. And they do it for nothing. They're just doing it to, for uh, trying to understand. And it's being pushed back against by academia. So let's work together, guys, all right? Give me a th thumbs up. And, and be sure that you spread this around. This is not, this is something that affects so much. It's just, it's staggering. It literally is the biggest discovery in human history. You know, Jesus Christ said the earth is a corpse. Now, <laughs> the, it, the, it could just be a little piece of a corpse. If the moon is a tendon, emphasis, I mean, just think about the size. Those things are tiny in the, in, in creature's body. I mean, tiny. We are a speck in a biological universe, my friends. That's all I can say. Shocker du jour, no question about that. I love you all.